In the previous video, we looked at the basic principles of interpreting the Hess chart. Now we are going to look at uh, different muscle paralysis examples and see how to interpret an Hess chart in those muscle paralysis. So while interpreting this particular chart, we first need to determine which I is the one which is involved. So we look at the inner square. And if you see how the inner square is plotted in the left eye, you see it is completely plotted, whereas when you go to the right eye, the inner square extends beyond the chart, which instinctively shows us that the problematic eye is the left eye and not the right. Now, once you have determined that, you are going to determine which, what is the primary deviation versus the secondary deviation. So if you start looking at the center of the already plotted chart in the, in the Hess chart and start counting the squares till the plotted chart of the eye, you see that it is about two squares distance where it is displaced nasally. So the primary deviation is about two times five, 10 degrees of isotropia. Whereas in the right eye, which is going to tell us about the secondary deviation, it is one, two, three, four, five, six squares. So six times five is uh, 30 degrees. So the secondary deviation is 30 degrees of nasal displacement or esotropia. So we till now we have determined which eye is the paralytic eye. We have also determined what the primary deviation is and what the secondary deviation is. We have also determined what is the direction of the deviation, which is esotropia. Then once you start focusing on the outer square, you can determine which is the underacting muscle and instinctively can see that the lateral rectus is underacting. So the main culprit muscle is the lateral rectus in the left eye. Now after doing that you are going to focus on the yoke muscle which is going to be the medial rectus of the right eye and if you plot the outer square you once again see that the medial rectus is so overactive that it is going outside the right eye's chart. After doing this you are going to look at the, the antagonist muscle which is the muscle in the same eye as a problem but working in the opposite direction. And here you see the medial rectus is overacting because of the lateral rectus underaction. And this way, you can determine that this particular patient has a left lateral rectus paralysis or six nerve palsy. So let's look at another chart. So if you focus on the inner square of the two eyes, the inner square of the right eye seems to be plotted on the graph, whereas the inner circle or inner square of the left eye seems to be going out of the chart. And then you can very easily see that the right eye has a smaller square so in a person with no muscle sequity, the square should be here with the center being here. And in the left eye, the square should be plotted here. So looking at the primary deviation, the right eye is deviated nasally and the magnitude is one, two, three, or a little over four squares, so that is four times five, 20 degrees of inward turn, whereas the secondary deviation is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is 35 
degrees of inward deviation. So the primary deviation is less than the secondary deviation. Now after having done that, you are going to look at the primary muscle, which is the culprit. And if you were to plot uh, the outer square in a person without muscle problem or muscles equally, it would have been plotted this way. So compared to what you are plotting, you see under action of the right lateral rectus. Now, once you have done this, you are going to look at the yoke muscle of the opposite eye, which is going to be the medial rectus, and you see the medial rectus overacting. After documenting this, you are going to look at the ipsilateral antagonist muscle, which is going to be the right medial rectus, and you see an overaction of the medial rectus also. So after seeing this, you are going to look at the yoke muscle of the antagonist muscle in the eye with the problem, which is going to be the left lateral rectus, and you see an obvious underaction here. So keeping in mind that this patient has a right lateral rectus paralysis, according to the Herring's law of equal innervation, there would be more signals going to the left medial rectus, causing an overaction of that. Because of an unopposed right lateral rectus, there is going to be an overaction of the right medial rectus also and the an underaction of the left lateral rectus muscle also. Now if you look at this particular HES chart, you will once again see that the inner square of the left eye is slightly smaller than the inner circle of the right eye. And thus you know that the problem is in the left eye. After having seen that, you are going to see what the primary deviation is. And this is the center of the chart if traced in a normal person. The difference between the plotted chart and what the normal chart should be is about one square, so about five degrees of elevation in the left eye. Now in the right eye, there is a little over five degrees of depression of the right eye, slightly more than that. So about, let's say, seven degrees of uh, depression of the right eye. So we instinctively know that the problem is of the left eye. Now, after having determined the eye and the primary deviation versus the secondary deviation, we're going to look at what the relative actions of the muscles are. So if you focus on the outer square of the left eye, the normal plot should have been this way. However, you see that there is a superior oblique underaction of the left eye. Having determined this, you are going to see what the yoke muscle in the contralateral eye is, which is going to be the inferior rectus, and you see that the inferior rectus is overacting. After having determined this, you are going to look at the antagonist muscle in the eye which is involved, which is the left eye, and you will see a slight overaction of the inferior plate. So you can very easily say that this patient is suffering from the left superior oblique palsy or fourth nerve paralysis. So just to recap, HES chart is used to A, document any muscles equally, and B, to look at the progression or resolution of those muscles equally. Now, the way to interpret or read a HES chart is first to look at the inner square and determine which is the smaller inner square. So whichever eye has a smaller inner square is the eye which is the problematic eye. Uh, once you have done this, you are going to determine uh, what is the direction of the deviation and what is the magnitude of deviation. And here we're looking at the primary deviation and the secondary deviation. The primary deviation would be the deviation in the eye which is affected. 
or having the paralytic muscle, whereas the secondary deviation is in the normal fixating eye. The fourth thing to see is the muscles equally. And for that, you focus on the outer square and you first focus on the muscle, which is underacting in the eye, which is affected. And that is the culprit muscle. Once you have identified the culprit muscle, in the affected eye, you are going to focus on the other eye, on the yoke muscle, which is the muscle causing the eye to move in the same direction as the muscle which is affected. So if there's a lateral rectus which is paralytic in the left eye, for instance, then the medial rectus of the right eye is the one that you focus on after identifying the lateral rectus. And you will usually see an overaction of that muscle. Once you have looked at the culprit muscle and the yoke muscle in the other eye, you turn your focus on the antagonist muscle in the left eye. So left lateral rectus not working, the antagonist muscle would be the unopposed medial rectus, which would also show an overaction of the medial rectus, and therefore less signals would be going to the lateral rectus of the right eye and therefore you will see an underaction of the right lateral rectus also. Thank you.